Well, as the plot thickens in the Rex Hewerman case, more information coming out about the fact that he could possibly be linked to four Las Vegas murders. Now, we know the accused Gilgo Beach serial killer has an extensive amount of evidence against him to what took place in Long Island. Investigators continue to try to figure out if he's involved with any murders in Atlantic City, in South Carolina, where he had a property, or where he had two timeshares in Las Vegas. There's at least four murders that they're uh, trying to see if he's linked to there. Obviously, it seems like he has an M.O. He tends to go after uh, sex workers. And one of the things that I'm confused about, and I don't know if we'll get clarity on it, but when you look at that Las Vegas property that he had, he had two of them. And so I'm wondering, did he have one property that he would go to with his wife and then a secret property that she didn't know about that he would go and uh, commit these evil atrocities at? Because what would be the point? And they're not that far from each other. I actually was looking at, uh, I was actually looking at the distance between the two properties that he has in Las Vegas. They're not that far from each other. So Daily Mail uh, giving us a report on this. Hewerman made his second court appearance since being arrested for the Gilgo Beach killings, looking a little worse for the wear. This week's hearing was just a status conference, most of which was handled prior in judges chambers. But when he did enter the courtroom, the murder suspect, who appears to have lost a little weight in the last few weeks, kept pretty quiet. I didn't notice that, that he lost weight. Interesting clue piece. Hey, put it in the chat. Do you guys think that he actually is responsible for what took place in Las Vegas. Do you think he's killed in Las Vegas? Let me know. The conference was primarily about evidence, and there is a lot of it. We are talking a 13-year investigation into the murders of four women whose bodies were found along a desolate stretch of Gilgo Beach in Long Island. Hewerman is charged with three out of the four of those murders. Now, as part of the discovery process, the prosecution has turned over terabytes of information, thousands of documents, photos, surveillance videos, autopsy, DNA reports, and what they have disclosed so far is only a fraction of what they're going to have. Outside of court, Rex's attorney discussed the struggle of sifting through the sheer volume of information. The district attorney provided us with apparently eight terabytes of discovery, which we're obviously going to get. Eight terabytes, folks. It's a lot. Eight terabytes is a lot of information. Go through with fine detail over the coming months. I understand there's going to be more discovery forthcoming. And we have a new court date of September 27th. That's the next scheduled court date. And again, it's going to be a conference date. And we'll update the judge on where we're at. And just to pour through the discovery is, is an enormous task. But we're, we're prepared for it. So what I was, was I, what I was provided to with today is what, and I'm not computer literate, is eight terabytes of information. So I was told that a gigabyte is a 6,000 pages, and I was told that there's a 1,000 gigabytes in a terabyte. I don't know if that's true, but if it is, it's enormous. You're talking about uh, 13 years worth of investigation, uh, so it is, I'm, I'm not going to speak for defense counsel, but suffice to say, it is a massive amount of material. And don't forget, it's continuing uh, because the investigation is continuing. So uh, we're talking about a massive amount of, of material. Rex Hewerman is charged in the... I think if they have that much evidence against the guy, it's going to be hard for him to come and uh, overcome it. <laughs> and think about this. There's 51 terabytes of information against Brian Koberger. They're talking in this case, like, hey, this is astronomical. We've never seen anything like this. It's insane. Literally, you know, eight terabytes of information. And then in the Brian Koberger case, they're like, oh, you know, we had 51. So that's a lot, a lot, a lot of information at eight terabytes uh, to get through. The murders of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. No charges in the death of the fourth victim, Maureen Brainerd Barnes, have been filed yet. However, in court documents, police said that they do expect that investigation to wrap up soon. And of course, there are the other six victims who were discovered in the same area. Now, I dove into that story in my previous video on this case. All of these cases are still unsolved. The investigation into Rex Hewerman, though, doesn't end on Long Island, New York. Since his arrest, it has expanded into three other states. 
Daily Mail confirmed that in 2005, Rex and his wife Asa purchased a timeshare at a resort complex in Las Vegas for just shy of $17,000. Now, this was reportedly their second property there. CNN found records indicating that the couple's first was in 2003. Now, these dates are important. The complex Club de Soleil is situated off of the Las Vegas Strip, and it's billed as a little slice of the Mediterranean smack in the middle of the desert. After Hewerman's ties to the area became known, Las Vegas Metro Police announced that they were digging into their cold case archives to search for any potential connection to the suspected Gilgo Beach killer. However, they weren't specific as to whether they had any leads. But there is an infamous cold case from years ago that could fit the bill, and it would certainly be where I would start if I were them. Between 2003 and 2006, four women disappeared in the Las Vegas area. Jody Brewer, Jessica Foster, Lindsay Harris, and Misty Sains. They were all between 19 and 25 years old, all petite, all sex workers. They also advertised their services on Backpage. All of these facts being very similar to the Gilgo Beach victims. The remains of Jody, Lindsay, and Misty were found pretty much scattered all over the Las Vegas Valley, but Jessica Foster is still listed as missing. For years, the prevailing theory about this case was that these women were the victim of suspected serial killer Neil Falls. Falls was living in nearby Henderson, Nevada at the time of their disappearances. At the time, Falls... So now they're going to go be going back and forth. Was it Rex Hurman? Was it Neil Falls? Falls was living in nearby Henderson, Nevada, and is suspected of murdering roughly 10 women. Now, he was killed by a sex worker in 2015. And while Falls is probably the most likely suspect here, his name rose to the top of the list long before we ever heard of Rex Hewerman, before his arrest or his connection to the area were revealed. So considering the timing of when Hewerman bought timeshares, 2003 and 2005, and these disappearances occurring between 2003 and 2006, I would think this is one of the cold cases Metro PD is currently examining. Hewerman also has a large plot of land in South Carolina, right across the street from his brother, Craig. Now, this land has not been built up yet, but reportedly, this was where Rex had planned to retire. Now, you might recall that Hewerman's Chevy Avalanche, which was a key piece of evidence leading to his arrest, was discovered in Chester County, South Carolina. That's nearby. The Chester County Sheriff's Department confirmed that they are also working with a Long Island serial killer task force and have been since prior to Hewerman's arrest. They haven't been specific, though, as to the cold cases that they are currently looking into. Atlantic City, New Jersey is the third place where investigators and web sleuths have long believed Lisk may have been active. In 2006, the bodies of four sex workers turned up in a drainage ditch outside of a seedy Atlantic City motel. They are presumed to have been killed by the same person who became known as the Eastbound Strangler. Now, this case had gone cold by the time the Gilgo Beach Four were discovered several years later. When the Gilgo Beach victims were found, the scene was eerily similar to the Atlantic City victims. In both cases, there were four women, all sex workers, dumped near the water with their bodies placed in close proximity. So pretty much immediately there were questions as to whether the same person was responsible for all eight of these murders. However, some facts didn't match up, particularly the ages. The Gilgo Beach victims were all around the same age, early 20s, and the oldest Atlantic City victim was 42. The women there were also not bound or covered in burlap like in Gilgo. When Rex Hewerman was arrested in mid-July as the suspected Gilgo Beach serial killer, I spoke with investigators in South Jersey who were eager to look into whether this suspect could potentially be their guy. But unfortunately, he isn't, so he can officially close the book on that long-running conspiracy. Detectives working on both cases recently met to compare notes. Specifically, they looked at the timetable and the methodology of each of the cases and determined that there does not seem to be a connection between the Gilgo Beach serial killer and the Eastbound Strangler. I, I could see him not being the eastbound strangler, but the butcher, what was it, the man over butcher? I think these cases in Las Vegas are pretty compelling. They're investigating, obviously, him in, in Las Vegas for several different things. And the thing about Vegas, guys, there's all kinds of people that go to Vegas and end up going missing, and it it's a cold case. I wonder which city has the most cold cases. I'm going to type it in on Google real fast. Does Las Vegas have the most cold cases? And so uh, FBI reports that in 2020, they actually had a lower homicide clearance rate than the rest of the country because it's alarming news. Over 40% of homicides in Las Vegas have not been solved. So I would say, yeah, that puts it near the top of the cold case list. There's a 40% chance if you commit a murder in Las Vegas, it's not going to get solved. That's a big problem. That's a huge problem. And so no telling how many people went missing in Las Vegas uh, when Rex Hewerman was there. 
to the last place that investigators could find more potential victims brings us right back to Long Island, where Hewerman was born and raised. Police executed a search warrant on the Hewerman home and some storage units that he owned. And at the house, they tore up the place looking for evidence connected to the case. Images provided to the Daily Mail show the extent to which they searched this property. This one here is from a bathroom. You can see the flooring has been completely ripped up and the exterior of this bathtub was sliced pretty much in half to see if anything was hidden inside. And according to a police source who spoke with the New York Post, one of the things that the team was looking for were trophies. Now in this context, a trophy is a memento that some killers take from their victims as a souvenir. I hate the fact that this is like a thing that people do they take a trophy. I wonder what the trophy is that Rex Hewerman's taking. To be clear, police haven't said on the record that they believe the Gilgo Beach murderer took trophies or that any were found inside Hewerman's home. You gotta remember, the victims weren't disposed of with their clothing or personal belongings. So it's not a far reach to assume that whomever killed them kept something. And that's my theory. The killer in this case was methodical. He was methodical with how the victims were targeted, how they were found, and how they were disposed of. And that just makes me think that the perpetrator would want some tangible keepsake to remember these acts. Now, my gut tells me that the Gilgo Beach Four were not the only victims of the Long Island serial killer. And if this perpetrator was someone who kept trophies, any personal items that were found by police that don't belong to the three women Hewerman is charged with killing could lead them to the discovery of more victims that are yet unknown for more true crime. Guys, I thought that that was a very fascinating segment from the Daily Mail. Let me know in the comment section what you were thinking. I also want to invite you to support us. We're totally dependent on your support to continue doing what we're doing. You can support through PayPal, which is Tyler Feller, Cash App, dollar sign, Tyler Feller 22, or Venmo at Tyler hyphen Feller. And we will be back very, very soon.